My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look also at ships. Although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and creature of the sea, is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives, or a grapevine bear figs? Thus no spring yields both salt water and fresh. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. The Book of Ezra Chapter 9 When these things were done, the leaders came to me, saying, The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the peoples of the lands with respect to the abominations of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. For they have taken some of their daughters as wives for themselves and their sons, so that the holy seed is mixed with the peoples of those lands. Indeed, the hand of the leaders and rulers has been foremost in this trespass. So when I heard this thing, I tore my garment and my robe, and plucked out some of the hair of my head and beard, and sat down astonished. Then everyone who trembled at the words of the God of Israel assembled to me, because of the transgression of those who had been carried away captive, and I sat astonished until the evening sacrifice. At the evening sacrifice I arose from my fasting, and having torn my garment and my robe, I fell on my knees and spread out my hands to the Lord my God. And I said, O oh my God, I am too ashamed and humiliated to lift up my face to you, my God, for our iniquities have risen higher than our heads, and our guilt has grown up to the heavens. Since the days of our fathers to this day, we have been very guilty and for our iniquities, we, our kings and our priests, have been delivered into the hand of the kings of the lands, to the sword, to captivity, to plunder, and to humiliation, as it is this day. And now, for a little while, grace has been shown from the Lord our God, to leave us a remnant to escape, and to give us a peg in his holy place, that our God may enlighten our eyes, and give us a measure of revival in our bondage. For we were slaves. Yet our God did not forsake us in our bondage, 
but he extended mercy to us in the sight of the kings of Persia, to revive us, to repair the house of our God, to rebuild its ruins, and to give us a wall in Judah and Jerusalem. And now, O our God, what shall we say after this? For we have forsaken your commandments, which you commanded by your servants the prophets, saying, The land which you are entering to possess is an unclean land, with the uncleanness of the peoples of the lands, with their abominations which have filled it from one end to another with their impurity. Now therefore, do not give your daughters as wives for their sons, nor take their daughters to your sons, and never seek their peace or prosperity, that you may be strong and eat the good of the land, and leave it as an inheritance to your children forever. And after all that has come upon us for our evil deeds and for our great guilt, since you, our God, have punished us less than our iniquities deserve, and have given us such deliverance as this, should we again break your commandments and join in marriage with the people committing these abominations? Would you not be angry with us until you had consumed us, so that there would be no remnant or survivor? O Lord God of Israel, you are righteous, for we are left as a remnant as it is this day. Here we are before you, in our guilt, though no one can stand before you because of this. Chapter 10 Now while Ezra was praying, and while he was confessing, weeping, and bowing down before the house of God, a very large assembly of men, women, and children gathered to him from Israel. For the people wept very bitterly. And Shechaniah, the son of Jehiel, one of the sons of Elam, spoke up and said to Ezra, We have trespassed against our God and have taken pagan wives from the peoples of the land. Yet now there is hope in Israel in spite of this. Now therefore, let us make a covenant with our God to put away all these wives and those who have been born to them, according to the advice of my master and of those who tremble at the commandment of our God. And let it be done according to the law. Arise, for this matter is your responsibility. We also are with you. Be of good courage and do it. Then Ezra arose, and made the leaders of the priests, the Levites, and all Israel swear an oath that they would do according to this word. So they swore an oath. Then Ezra rose up from before the house of God and went into the chamber of Jehohanan, the son of Eliashib. And when he came there, he ate no bread and drank no water, for he mourned because of the guilt of those from the captivity. And they issued a proclamation throughout Judah and Jerusalem to all the descendants of the captivity that they must gather at Jerusalem and that whoever would not come within three days, according to the instructions of the leaders and elders, all his property would be confiscated, and he himself would be separated from the assembly of those from the captivity. So all the men of Judah and Benjamin gathered at Jerusalem within three days. It was the ninth month on the twentieth of the month. And all the people sat in the open square of the house of God, trembling because of this matter and because of heavy rain. Then Ezra the priest stood up and said to them, You have transgressed and have taken pagan wives, adding to the guilt of Israel. Now therefore, make confession to the Lord God of your fathers and do his will. Separate yourselves from the peoples of the land and from the pagan wives. Then all the assembly answered, and said with a loud voice, Yes, as you have said, so we must do. But there are many people. It is the season for heavy rain, and we are not able to stand outside. Nor is this the work of one or two days, for there are many of us who have transgressed in this matter. Please, let the leaders of our entire assembly stand, and let all those in our cities who have taken pagan wives 
come at appointed times, together with the elders and judges of their cities, until the fierce wrath of our God is turned away from us in this matter. Only Jonathan the son of Asahel and Jehaziah the son of Tikva opposed this, and Meshullam and Shabbatai the Levite gave them support. Then the descendants of the captivity did so, and Ezra the priest, with certain heads of the father's households, were set apart by the father's households, each of them by name. And they sat down on the first day of the tenth month to examine the matter. By the first day of the first month, they finished questioning all the men who had taken pagan wives. And among the sons of the priests who had taken pagan wives, the following were found of the sons of Jeshua, the son of Josadak, and his brothers. Maaseah, Eliezer, Jarib, and Gedaliah. And they gave their promise that they would put away their wives. And being guilty, they presented a ram of the flock as their trespass offering. Also of the sons of Imma, Hanani, and Zebediah. Of the sons of Harim, Maaseah, Elijah, Shimea, Jehiel, and Uzziah. Of the sons of Pasha, Elioenai, Maaseah, Ishmael, Nithanel, Josabad, and Elisa. Also of the Levites, Josabad, Shimei, Kilea, the same is Kilaita, Pethahiah, Judah, and Eliezer. Also of the singers, Eliashib, and of the gatekeepers, Shalom, Telim, and Uri. And others of Israel, of the sons of Perosh, Ramiah, Jeziah, Malchiah, Mijamin, Eliezer, Malchijah, and Binea. Of the sons of Elam, Mataniah, Zechariah, Jehiel, Abdi, Jeremoth, and Eliah. Of the sons of Zatu, Elioenai, Eliashib, Mataniah, Jeremoth, Zabad, and Aziza. Of the sons of Bebai, Jehohanan, Hananiah, Zabai, and Athlai. Of the sons of Bani, Mishulam, Maluk, Adea, Jashub, Sheol, and Ramoth. Of the sons of Pehath Moab, Adna, Kilal, Binea, Maaseah, Mataniah, Bezalel, Binuai, and Manasseh. Of the sons of Harim, Eliezer, Ishijah, Malkijah, Shimea, Shimeon, Benjamin, Malak, and Shemariah. Of the sons of Hashem, Matani, Matata, Zabad, Eliphalet, Jeremiah, Manasseh, and Shimei. Of the sons of Bani, Maadai, Amram, Yuel, Binea, Bidia, Kela, Vaniah, Meromoth, Eliashib, Mataniah, Matani, Jaisai, Bani, Binuai, Shimei, Shelemiah, Nathan, Adea, Machnadabai, Sheshai, Sharai, Azarel, Shelemiah, Shemariah, Shalom, Amariah, and Joseph. Of the sons of Nebo, Jeiel, Mattathiah, Zabad, Zabina, Jadai, Joel, and Binea. All these had taken pagan wives, and some of them had wives by whom they had children. Psalm 28, a Psalm of David. To you I will cry, O Lord, my rock. Do not be silent to me, lest if you are silent to me, I become like those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry to you, when I lift up my hands toward your holy sanctuary. Do not take me away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity 
who speak peace to their neighbors, but evil is in their hearts. Give them according to their deeds, and according to the wickedness of their endeavors. Give them according to the work of their hands. Render to them what they deserve. Because they do not regard the works of the Lord, nor the operation of his hands, he shall destroy them and not build them up. Blessed be the Lord, because he has heard the voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song I will praise him. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving refuge of his anointed. Save your people, and bless your inheritance. Shepherd them also, and bear them up forever. The Book of Proverbs Do not be envious of evil men, nor desire to be with them, for their heart devises violence, and their lips talk of troublemaking. Through wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong. Yes, a man of knowledge increases strength. For by wise counsel, you will wage your own war. And in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. Wisdom is too lofty for a fool. He does not open his mouth in the gate. He who plots to do evil will be called a schemer. The devising of foolishness is sin, and the scoffer is an abomination to men. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Deliver those who are drawn toward death, and hold back those stumbling to the slaughter. If you say, surely we did not know this, does not he who weighs the hearts consider it? He who keeps your soul, does he not know it? And will he not render to each man according to his deeds? My son, eat honey because it is good, and the honeycomb which is sweet to your taste. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be to your soul. If you have found it, there is a prospect, and your hope will not be cut off. Do not lie in wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Do not plunder his resting place. For a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again. But the wicked shall fall by calamity. Do not rejoice when your enemy falls, and do not let your heart be glad when he stumbles. Lest the Lord see it, and it displease him, and he turn away his wrath from him. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the wicked, for there will be no prospect for the evil man. The lamp of the wicked will be put out. My son, fear the Lord and the King. Do not associate with those given to change, for their calamity will rise suddenly. And who knows the ruin those two can bring? These things also belong to the wise. It is not good to show partiality in judgment. 
He who says to the wicked, You are righteous. Him the people will curse. Nations will abhor him. But those who rebuke the wicked will have delight, and a good blessing will come upon them. He who gives a right answer kisses the lips. Prepare your outside work. Make it fit for yourself in the field, and afterward build your house. Do not be a witness against your neighbor without cause, for would you deceive with your lips? Do not say, I will do to him just as he has done to me. I will render to the man according to his work. I went by the field of the lazy man, and by the vineyard of the man devoid of understanding, and there it was, all overgrown with thorns. Its surface was covered with nettles. Its stone wall was broken down. When I saw it, I considered it well. I looked on it and received instruction. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. So shall your poverty come like a prowler and your need like an armed man.